Hello dear students, we will continue with uh, the previous sessions of uh, 8051 instruction set. Quickly let us have the recap of uh, what is being done in the previous class. In the previous class we have discussed about the data transfer instructions of which we have learnt about the bit data transfer. For example, it is move C bit address is one of the instruction. Then we have also learnt about the exchange uh, instruction wherein we have learnt two instruction XCH and XCHD. XCH does the um, exchange of 8 bytes between the accumulator and the associated uh, destination register while XCHD is a nibble uh, exchange that happens it sits only with the accumulator. Then we have also learnt the external uh, uh, memory uh, instructions like move x which is used for uh, obtaining the data from the RAM location where the address of the RAM location can either be 8 bit or 16 bit. If it is 8 bit then it is the resistor R0 R1 being used and if the address is 16 bit it is the DPTR. The code in memory instruction is move C. So whenever we have uh, data into the code memory that is the ROM location so the data can be obtained using the move C instruction and this move C instruction operates uh, with the uh, accumulator that means the data can be bought only into the accumulator and moreover the address is being held in the DPTR and the offset is in the accumulator. So the effective address is uh, nothing but DPTR plus the accumulator contents. Then we have also begun now uh, with the stack uh, related instructions or the stack memory operation instructions that is push and pop. We have also taken up a few examples to understand each of the instructions. Going further, we will quickly again have a small uh, uh, discussion on the stack operation. As known, there are uh, two instructions associated with the stack operation that is push and pop are the instructions. So when uh, it is the push and pop uh, instructions for the stack, the default source or the destination is a stack memory, which also means that it is a stack pointer which holds the address of the top of the stack. Now during the operation of the push and pop, the like for example, when you say push, it is always the direct address. That means the data which is being specified in the source could be moved on to the destination. So for the push instruction, the destination is a stack memory and what is the operand associated with push is the source and it should be a direct address. It cannot be any resistor like we cannot say push R0, pop R1. It's an invalid type of instruction. So the stack pointer is the one which holds the top of the stack. Now what happens during the push and pop operation? So as it is a stack is a last in first out that means the data that is being loaded at the end would be popped first. So for every push the stack pointer is being incremented and the data is stored on the stack which means a sequence that means push operation first the stack pointer gets incremented by one and then the 8 bit of data would be stored onto the stack. And when it is pop, you have to retrieve the data first from the top of the stack and then decrement the stack pointer. If at all we decrement the stack pointer first before retrieving the data, then the data which is there on the top of the stack would be lost. And in both these instructions, that is the push and the pop, there are no flags that are affected. So let us uh, look at uh, this uh, example. So syntax as said it is push direct pop direct direct here is the address and both of these instructions will take two bytes of the memory space. Look at the example that we have here move r6 comma hash 25 h so the value 25 would be loaded onto the resistor r6 then move r1 comma 12 h the value 12 would be copied into the resistor r1 and move R4 comma F3 that means the value F3 would be copied onto the resistor R4. Now the instruction that we have written associated with the push we have said push 06. So what happens over here as we know the stack pointer if nothing is previously loaded the stack pointer would be holding the value 07. 
So the moment you, I mean, the instruction push 06 is being executed, 06 is the address associated with the resistor R6. And what are the contents of that resistor R6 is 25. So the value 25 would be put onto the top of the stack, then the stack pointer will be incremented. Next, it is again push 01. That means the resistor contents of R1 would be put onto the top of the stack. That will be 12H. And then we say push 04. 04 is the address associated with the resistor R4 and the value F3 would be put onto the stack. So when you look at the stack contents, the lowermost byte would be 25. Above that will be 12H and then will be the F3H. Then finally, you will have the stack pointer would pointing to the top of the stack. Now here that 0, 06, 0, 01 and 0, 04, we are assuming that the bank 0 is being used. As we know in the PSW uh, register, that is program status word register, we can modify the bits of the register select to 0 and 1. The bank selection can be done and on reset it is 00. zero. That's why these addresses that we have specified here are associated with the resistors R0 to R7 of bank 0 itself. Okay. Next, uh, if uh, we take further another example, we have pushed the data onto the stack. Okay, so lower we have 25, above that we have 12 and then we have F3. Now, when we are popping the contents, okay, so we have written pop 03, pop 05 and pop 02. So, effectively what is it? 03 is the address of the resistor R3. 05 is the address of the resistor R5 and 02 is the address of the resistor R2. Okay, so what is there on the top of the stack is the value F3. So the value F3 would be copied into the resistor R3 and the stack pointer would be decremented by 1. Next, the value 12 would be copied into the resistor R5 and it will be decremented by 1 again. And finally, 25 would be copied into the resistor R3 and it would be further decremented by a value of 1. Now, the question arises, when will we use this stack? Okay, right. So, the main importance of the stack operations or the stack memory is used whenever we have the uh, call to a function or call to an interrupt. For example, see we have written a program, say we have instructions i1, i2, i3 and so on. Somewhere in between we have called a function. Say for example, there is a delay function being called or a factorial function is being called. Right. So, when we call a particular function with the constraint of having only 8 resistors R0 to R7, there is every possibility that the called function and the calling function may use some common resistors. Okay, say so the main program uses the resistors R1, R2 and R3 and the function that is being called say uses the resistors R2 and R3. So after execution of the function, the control will be transferred back to the main program. So when the control is transferred back to the main program, what is required that the contents of the resistor R2 and R3 should be the original contents before the function is being called. Then what can be done? When before entering into the function, the contents of the resistor as in the example that we have taken R1, R2, R3 can be put onto the stack. Let the function use the same resistors operate on the data that is available in those particular resistors, modify, do what I mean, do all that possible with those resistors. But once there is a return function or the control is transferred to the main program, what can be done? We can pop the contents of those resistors from the stack into the respective R1, R2 and R3. Fine. So that is the main use of the stack uh, memory and the stack related instructions that is push and pop. So let us look at this uh, example of uh, how uh, exchange uh, operation can be done okay using uh, the same logic that we have discussed previously but here we can use the push and pop instruction so what is the logic of the data transfer i mean a data exchange say we have uh, the I mean, we have to exchange the contents of the memory location 47 with the contents of the memory location 64 normally what we do is we use temp 
So whatever is the content of uh, the uh, memory location 47 would be put onto the temporary variable or a temporary register. And then the contents of the memory location 64 would be put into the memory location 47. And then from the temp, the data can be bought into the memory location 64. Fine. So this program can be done with uh, the exchange instruction. It can also be done with the move instruction. And here we are looking at this example, how you can do this operation or exchange of the data using your push and pop instructions. So what we'll do is we will push the contents of uh, the resist, I mean, of the memory location 47, say onto the stack first. And then we will push the contents of the memory location 64 onto the stack. And when we are popping, we will pop it in the same order. That means first we will pop the top of the stack into the register 47 and next into the 64. This is how we can write the program. Push 47. So the top of the stack, stack pointer, which is holding say at the highest that is uh, 7, would be containing the value set 47, contents of the memory location 47 and the stack pointer gets incremented. Then we have written push 64H. That means the contents of the memory location 64 would be put onto the stack. And now we are saying pop 47. Look, here is the, uh, now what you can say, how the exchange basically happens. See, the top of the stack contains the uh, value associated with the 64 bit. But what we are saying, we are saying that whatever is there on the top of the stack would be pushed or rather popped into the memory location 47, which is very clear that the content of 64 is bought into the location that is 47. And then we say pop 64. So whatever is there on for in 47 would be put into 64. This is how the exchange happens using push and pop. This particular example also uh, gives us a clarity that whenever you want to retrieve the same data, okay, like as I said in the previous example, we are storing the contents of the resistor R1, R2 and R3. When you want to retrieve, it should be retrieved in such a way that whatever was there in the resistor R1 should be bought into the resistor R1 itself. Okay, so when you are retrieving the same data, the order should be reversed. Okay, look at this example. Here the order of push and pop is maintained. That's why there's an exchange operation that is happening. But if at all, I wanted that whatever is the content of the memory location 47 to be put into the memory location 47 itself, then instead of writing pop 47H, I would have written as pop 64H. Because I know the top of the stack contains the address, uh, sorry, contains the data associated with the memory 64 and you pop it, it puts back. Okay, so very important to remember is the order in which the data is being pushed onto the stack. Reverse will be the order of popping to retrieve back the data in the same order. Okay, and if you want to exchange, then it can you put the data in a particular order and retrieve the data back in the same order. When I talk about the order, I'm saying whichever address data you have pushed first, the same data would be popped first, then it gets exchanged. Okay, now let us move on to the next category of the arithmetic instructions. So the ALU of the microcontroller performs uh, all arithmetic as well as logical instructions. So the arithmetic instructions that are associated are the addition, subtraction, increment, decrement, multiplication and division. So before we go into the uh, understanding of uh, these arithmetic instructions, let us understand some fundamentals of the additions which we are all aware, let us just review back because this is very helpful for us uh, when we write programs associated with uh, adding some numbers, n bit numbers or subtracting, multiplying. So when you look at the uh, number system, right, there are two types of uh, numbers, either a number is signed or it is unsigned. So now you know that the microcontroller 8051 is a 8-bit processor which means that it can store 8 bit of data. So when I look at this 8 bit of the data, in the decimal, it can store minimum is 000, 000, 8 bits together, that is 0 decimal, and maximum is 255 decimal. 
that is how it becomes a total number of 256 0 to 255 when we put this in the form of the hexadecimal the I mean, minimum it can store is 00h and maximum it can go up to is ffh okay so when we look at the unsigned numbers all the 8 bits together will form the magnitude right that means all the numbers from 0 to fff are all treated as the whole numbers without any sign being considered but we also have the signed numbers right so when we say the sign numbers how do we identify the sign of a number the more significant bit of that 8 byte that is a seventh bit will tell us the uh, whether a number is positive or negative so if at all the most significant bit is 1 then it indicates that it's a negative number and if it is 0 it indicates that it is a positive number which also means that the remaining 7 bits that is 0 to 6 will give us the magnitude. So for a signed number one bit is associated for the sign and which is the most significant bit and the remaining 7 bits that is 0 to 6 will give us the magnitude. And we also know, should know that when you talk about the signed number they all are being represented in the tools complement form. Okay, so if you have some number minus, you form the two, find the two's complement of that number that gives a true value, value of the number. So what is the range then for the sign? The range will be minus 128 to plus 127, which also implies that any positive number beyond 127 would lead to an overflow and any number below 128, right, would also lead to an overflow. So the flags that get affected with the addition uh, instructions are the overflow and the carry flag. So let us take an uh, example and understand. So here we have the example of the unsigned number. Say we are performing the addition of 95 D stands for decimal plus 189. So what is the result that we get? We get it as 284. Obviously 284 is well beyond the range which has to be between 2, I mean 0 to 255. So what happens now? Ultimately, the carry flag would be set. That 95 decimal is represented in the binary here and 189 is also represented in the binary form. So you perform the normal binary addition, we observe that the carry flag would be set equal to 1. The same thing when I perform the addition with hexadecimal, that means converting this as you can see it is 5 and F, right? Similar it is B and D, binary to hexadecimal or decimal to hexadecimal would give us the same value. And when you perform the addition, we get it to pass 1C and the carry flag is being set. So this is very clear that there would be a carry flag and also the overflow because it has exceeded the number, maximum number which can be held in a 8-bit data. So here the input may be a valid 8-bit number. As you can see 95 is well within the range of 0 to 255. 189 is also well within the range of 0 to 255. But what happens to the sum? It has exceeded the range of 255 and hence the carry and overflow would be set. Now let us look at the example of the signed number. So here we have minus 001 plus 27. So it is the addition of minus 1 plus 27 and we get the result to be as 26 which is decimal. And as said, minus 1 has to be represented in the 2's complement form. So when you take the 2's complement of 1, it is all 1, 1, 1. And we have represented 27 in the binary equivalent. And now you perform the addition. So on addition, we see that the carry flag is being generated. So it's being discarded out. Right. So now you observe that the input is also valid number while the output also is a valid number. So hence the carry flag will not be set and you do not have the overflow. This is back into your fundamentals that you have done in the number system, uh, maybe in the logic design uh, subject or it could be in your basic electronics or possibly even in the uh, uh, PUC2 you would have studied uh, the binary additions. I mean that is what we have uh, looked back over here. 
This is another example. Okay, that is the addition of minus 70 and minus 70. The result is minus 140 D. What is the observation that we see here? The observation that we see is the number that input is given is a valid assigned number, but the result is an invalid because the maximum range that we have should be minus 128. And the same thing gets reflected here into the results also. So here the overflow flag as well as the carry flag would be set. Now why this, this uh, uh, I mean, what discussion we took up is because when you perform a program, right, you write a program and you want to give different test cases for the input as the input, right. So normally we do not really worry about uh, what is that input that we have given. Neither the controller will understand what is the input that you have given whether it is signed or unsigned. But as a programmer, we need to check our program for the different test cases. So what can be done is when you have the addition of 8-bit numbers, 16-bit numbers or series of 8-bit numbers, you can give all these different test cases, give all the unsigned numbers okay, and see what you get the result. Then give signed numbers where both the numbers are positive, negative, combinations of positive and negative. So you have the uh, result calculated with you and then you verify with the result that is being obtained after simulating. Uh, because as such, the add instruction when you use in the program will not differentiate what input you have given. It's the whole and soul the programmer's responsibility to know what are the test cases that you have to give and for the given test cases, what is the result that is being obtained. Okay, and if manually you have done, you are able to get the same result. That means you have the written the program, which is very universal, which can take all input test cases. And that's how usually a program is being uh, written and it's being tested. So having understood the fundamentals of uh, the number system with signed and unsigned, let us uh, look at the instructions that are associated with the arithmetic instructions. So the first one we have is the addition, which performs the addition of two 8-bit numbers. Right Now these two 8-bit numbers, they can either be stored in a register, they can be stored in a memory location, or they can be directly available as a part of instruction. So the syntax is add a comma source byte. One important thing that you need to remember here is the destination is always the accumulator, right? The destination is always the accumulator while the source byte can either be a immediate data which is being uh, prefixed with hex, uh, I mean hash, or it can be a register, or it can be a memory location. And this memory location can either be directly written with the address, or it can be indirect through the register R0 and R1. And the flags that are affected is the carry flag, the auxiliary flag, and the overflow flag. So what are the possible, um, uh, I mean, uh, uh, addressing modes that are supported add a comma d direct that means the source operand here is a direct memory address so the contents of the direct memory address would be added with the contents of the accumulator and the result would be stored back into the accumulator as you can see over here so it's basically a two byte instruction the next is add a comma rn. So it is a register type of addressing mode where n can range from 0 to 7. So you can use either register r0, r1, r2 up to r7. How this instruction works? The contents of the register r0 would be added with the contents of the register that is the accumulator a and the result is stored back into the accumulator. And this is effectively a one byte instruction. The next is add a comma at the rate ri. So this is an register indirect type of addressing mode which it supports. So the register ri which can be either r0 or r1 will point to a memory location right and the contents of the memory location 
would be added with the contents of the accumulator and the result would be put back into the accumulator. Then and it requires one byte of the memory space. The next we have is add a comma hash data. So here we are directly providing an 8 bit immediate data. So if you know that one of the data that has to be added, say if consecutively you want to add the value 10 to 10 numbers or 20 numbers. So that value 10 is known to us. Then you can directly write here as hash 10. So the contents that is hash 10 in this example that I have taken would be added with the contents of the accumulator and the result would be put back into the accumulator. So this is a two byte instruction. So as we can see here, it supports all the addressing modes that is direct, resistor, memory indirect through the resistor or resistor indirect and finally an immediate time. So let us take an uh, example to understand uh, the operation of the add instruction. Let us assume that the memory address as 56 being used and the contents of the accumulator as 40H. Right, and the resistor R6 contains the value 20. So before executing the instruction, we observe that the contents of the memory 56, say it is F6, right, and accumulator contents is 40, and the resistor R6 is 20. Now, if you have the instruction as add a comma 56H, so what are the contents of the memory location 56 is F6? And what are the contents of the accumulator is 40H. So fundamentally what happens? 50, I mean 40H would be added with F6 and the result would be stored back into the accumulator. So the addition of 0 and 6, we get it to be 6. F plus 4, after F it is 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2 and 1, 3. Right? So the carry would be set and it, the value will be loaded. So we get finally the result to be as 3, 6 and the carry flag will be set equal to 1. So look here now I have not told whether the number is signed or unsigned. Okay, so default if you don't specify or if you don't get into your mind then it is a normal unsigned operation that happens. Next is add a comma r6. Right now this example can be looked in two ways either you can consider the original value of 40H if they are not in a sequence right so if I consider 40H 40 plus 20 then it becomes as 60H right and there is no carry that is set but if I consider uh, the result of the previous accumulator in this in this particular instruction so what is the content of the accumulator is 36. So the contents of the accumulator 36 would be added with the resistor content that is 20H. So what will be the result? It will be 56 and the carry flag is not set. The next one we have is move A comma at the rate R1. So let us assume that R1 is pointing to the memory location 56. Explicitly I have not taken another one. Let us assume that it is pointing to the memory location that is 56. What are the contents of the memory location 56 is a 76. And what are the accumulator content after the previous instruction being executed is a 56. If I do not consider the previous uh, instruction a result of the accumulator then the result would be same as 36 and C would be equal to 1. But if I consider the previous accumulator content for the current instruction that is a comma at the rate r1 then we get the result to be as 52. How is it? Uh, sorry it won't be 52 it will be uh, 12 that will be uh, c over here because a is uh, 0 sorry a is 10 then uh, b we have it to be as uh, um, 11 and c okay. So this uh, result would be 5ch right and the carry flag would be obviously set the next one we have is move a comma hash 45 so this if i take it to be as 5c which is added with the 45 then we get the result here as 97h and c0 or if you take 40 and i mean 40h the contents of the accumulator added with 45 then it will be equal to 85 
fine so this is how uh, i mean uh, we uh, these examples uh, clearly tell us the addition being performed and the carry flag being set equal to 1 or 0 so similarly the overflow flag also will be equal to 1 in the cases where uh, how do you check for the overflow flag if at all there is a carry out of the sixth bit and no carry out of the seventh bit then the overflow flag will be equal to 1 which means general uh, you can say that when you uh, XOR the carry that is being generated out of the sixth bit with the carry that is being generated out of the seventh bit whatever is that result okay whether it is 1 or 0 so would be the overflow flag this fundamental you can remember I repeat again XOR of the carry that is being generated out of the sixth bit with the carry generated out of the seventh bit whatever answer you get after XOR will be the same as the overflow flag this you can verify yourself when you do your lab exercises let us look on to the uh, example of performing uh, the addition of two 8-bit numbers using different uh, methods wherein the data is the immediate value data is present in the resistors and data is present in the memory let us look at the first one so here what we have taken is we have taken the example as uh, uh, 56 and 7a are the two numbers which have to be added so when it is an immediate value uh, as said accumulator should be one of the operand right in an add instruction so you can either load 56 or 7a can be loaded here I have written as 56 so the value 56 would be copied into the accumulator and since it's an immediate and the value is already known right you can directly write it as hash 7ah or you can use I mean immediate with these two resistors A and R3 and you can write down A comma R3 and you get the result to be as uh, D0 because after A it is B, C, D, E, F and then 1, 0 one is the auxiliary i mean here the auxiliary carry flag will be set equal to one okay right one then five plus one is six and six plus seven is 13 which is nothing but the d d zero no carry flag will be set while the auxiliary carry flag will be set equal to one now when it is the resistor which means the previous example the second half that we saw the data is available into the accumulator as well as in the resistor r3 so use simply as add a comma r3 so effectively you get the same result whether it is because we have taken the same number again auxiliary flag will be equal to 1 and carry is 0 and d0 and when the data is in the memory okay so what uh, we have assumed here is a accumulator contents are with the 56 the value 7a let us assume is present in the memory location that is 35h okay so now how do we use the instruction add a comma 35h so the contents of the memory location 35 which is 7a would be added with the accumulator contents which is 56 and we get the result as d0h carry flag is not set while the auxiliary carry flag is set equal to 1 and the indirect r0 is holding the address of the memory location 35 and 35 is the one which contains that value 7a so again so r0 is pointing to the memory location 35h its contents which is 7a would be added with the contents of 56 and result would be available in the accumulator so this is how the add instruction can be used with the different addressing modes it all depends upon the problem statement whether you have some 10 consecutive memory locations or 10 consecutive numbers to be added which are stored in the memory location then obviously we would go in for the indirect method but if you say that I know two data which is um, I mean which is remains fixed then I can go for an immediate time or you want to perform the addition of two numbers where with the previous instructions it gets uh, stored in some resistors then you go with the resistor type. The next instruction that we have is the arithmetic instruction with carry. So the previous add instruction does not consider the carry as a part of the addition right so here this instruction add with the carry performs the addition of again two operands wherein it can either be resistor memory 
right or it can be an immediate data but along with that the carry bit is also considered or is a part of the addition so it is add c a comma source byte so what it does the contents of the accumulator would be added with the contents of the source byte uh, source byte specified and whatever is the carry status if the carry bit is 0 0 will be added if the carry bit is 1 1 will be added so again it holds the same as with addition either the source byte can either be an immediate resistor or it can be a memory location flags affected are c auxiliary flag as well as the overflow flag and again it's the same only it's the carry that gets added so here it will be what a plus whatever immediate data plus whatever is the carry bit and the effective would be put, I mean result would be put back into the accumulator. After the addition with carry, if again the carry flag is set, then the C, I mean if the carry is generated, C flag would be set equal to 1. If the auxiliary flag is generated, it will be set equal to 1. If there is an overflow, it would be set equal to 1. So in all these uh, instructions, what it considers, it considers carry as a part of the addition along with the two operands either it is a plus rn i mean contents of a plus the contents of the resistor rn plus the contents of the carry bit next is contents of the accumulator plus contents of the direct memory address specified with the contents of the carry bit then next again contents of accumulator with the contents of the memory location pointed by the resistor ri along with the carry flag is what gets added and the result will be stored back into the accumulator. So let us take an uh, example the usage of uh, this add with carry. So the nor when you perform an 8-bit addition then there is uh, no need of the add C instruction or carry is not considered. But when you have to perform the addition of say two 16-bit numbers or say 24 bit numbers or a 32 bit numbers or a 64 bit numbers okay your processor i mean the controller is a 8 bit so whenever you want to perform the addition of more than 8 bits then we go for using the add with the carry why because the addition of the 8 bit number can generate a carry right and this carry has to be considered for the next 8 bit addition so if the second 8 bit or the second byte of the number it generates a carry it should be considered for the third byte and so on so under such situations where you want to perform the addition of two numbers which are beyond 8 bit we use the uh, instruction that is add with carry so here we have taken an example write an 8051 assembly program to add two 16 bit numbers assume that the first 16 bit number is in the resistor r3 and r2 so the lower 8-bit data is there in the resistor R2 and the higher 8-bit data is in the resistor R3 and the second 16-bit number is in the resistor R1 and R0. It can be a memory location also for a simpler uh, uh, means of understanding the usage of add, add with carry. We have taken up this example. So uh, effectively the addition performs like this that means the contents of the resistor R2 which is the lower byte of the first 16 bit number would be added with the contents of the resistor R0 which is the lower byte of the second 16 bit number and the result is stored. Now after the addition of these two numbers lower byte if a carry is being generated then that has to be added with the higher byte uh, a number I mean higher byte of the first as well as the second number second 16 bit numbers so the logic is read the lower byte of both the numbers so obviously it will be in our resistor R2 and R0 as taken in the example perform the addition and store the result then read the higher byte of both the numbers both 16 bit numbers now we need to perform the addition with the carry why because let us say uh, the here R2 and R0 contains the number FF, FF plus FF. Obviously, there is a carry that will be generated because the result is going to be beyond 255 or beyond FF. So, for the next byte that is when it is R3 and R1, we have to take this carry into consideration. So, the program goes like this, ORG00H, 
move a comma r not okay so the contents of the resistor r not would be copied into the accumulator add a comma r2 so the i mean r2 is added with the contents of r not and we are storing the result say in the resistor r4 so the lower byte of the result is copied or it is stored into the resistor r4 next what we do is we get the higher byte of the number which is there in r1 into the accumulator and look at this we are writing add c right a comma r3 so the contents of accumulator is the contents of the resistor r1 which is the second or which is the higher byte of the 16 bit data added with r3 along with the carry if it is generated if it is not generated zero would be added but you have to take into considerations and then finally we will uh, say put the data into uh, the result into the resistor r5 so the same program can be extended maybe for a 24 bit 32 bit and so on so fundamentally this is the use of uh, the instruction add c when you want to perform the addition of two numbers which are beyond 8 bit okay so finally to uh, summarize on what uh, we have uh, done for the today session we started off uh, with the stack related instructions that is push and pop we understood those uh, operations their usage right when do we use the stack uh, instructions or the use of the stack memory we took an example of uh, the exchange Uh, exchanging the contents of two memory locations and we saw how push and pop instruction can be used in a very simplified way to exchange the data then we started off uh, with the arithmetic uh, instructions we fundamentally understood the number system of signed and unsigned because this is important for us not from the instruction point of view but it's important for us to know what are the different test cases that can be given for the Uh, program associated with uh, additions or it's even true even for the subtractions and so on then we discussed about the two types of uh, arithmetic instructions that is add and add c so add is a uh, addition of uh, two operands that is the source and the destination where the destination is always an accumulator while the source can either be a resistor it can be a uh, immediate data it can be direct address or it can be an indirect address and we took an example to understand the addressing modes and the instruction in a detail then the add with the carry addition with the carry right so this addition with carry supports all the same addressing modes that are with add but here with the addition of two operands it also considers the carry bit right so if the carry bit is 0 0 gets added with the two operands if the carry bit is 1 then 1 gets add 1 gets uh, added with the two operands now both these instructions uh, that is their add as well as add c affect the carry flag the auxiliary carry and the overflow flag okay so in the next session we'll take up uh, with the remaining uh, arithmetic instructions thank you